Hello, welcome to the queue. I'm going to do a game, a G40 game, with two house rules. The first house rule is going to be the anti-aircraft uh, house rule. I wanted to do the, the damage uh, aspect of it. And as I was thinking the, to make it more uh, appreciable to, to what the damage might be, I'm also going to throw in the attack and defense. So the anti-aircraft gun can go in on attacks uh, when enemy aircraft are visible in the uh, territory. So if you've got four, you know, Russian fighters, you can go in with two NA aircraft guns, you know, with the rest of your Germans. Uh, if you have less than three, well then obviously you can only bring one. So it's going to be dependent on the number of planes that are in the territory you're attacking. And then the, th the third aspect, uh, some people have talked about liking the flyover rule. So I thought, well, you can add that in uh, for, for nothing. So for uh, what that means uh, as a recap is anytime a plane flies over an a, a territory with an anti-aircraft gun that is unfriendly, there's a dice roll. So now you can spread out your uh, anti-aircraft guns on routes that you think that enemy bombers or planes might be attacking from. And, and do that, uh, like I said, the attack defense, and then the damage. So in this game, one will be a kill, and a roll of two will be a damage, which basically just retreats the plane to the closest friendly territory. The other uh, aspect, uh, house rule that I'm gonna use in this Global 40 game is I'm gonna use the deluxe map, which is a different map uh, with it's not really a different map. It's very similar to the standard Global 40 map, but there are a lot of changes as far as territory values, a few sea zones, uh, a few added territories, uh, some added bases, and I'll go over that here in a second. But the actual game itself, since I'm playing myself, there won't be any surprise sea lion attacks. Um, no J1, you know, sneaky you know, get in there and destroy American fleets because I know it's coming. Um, so it's going to be a standard kind of game, you know, probably race for Moscow, J2 or 3, you know, on, on the allies in the uh, Pacific side. And then we'll just see from there, you know, how the game plays uh, on this map with these added uh, IPCs. And I will get to showing you the differences on the maps right now. Um, I set it up last night, um, had my production meeting, what I'm, you know, how I'm going to do that. And then today I hear you know, on the chats that, gosh, there's, there's so much excess and allies content, I, I can't keep up with you know, all the different games going on and different stuff coming out. And that took me back a little bit. I thought, well, I don't know that I've ever been witness to too much excess and allies content. I mean, that's not to say I watch every video every second, you know, that it comes out, but, you know, I'll get to it, you know, get to videos and stuff, but I've never seen too much. So hopefully this game is not too much for you. Let's look at the map. Okay, so what I've got, uh, or what I did here was I placed chips out on the map, uh, and they're color coordinated, so you can kind of get a quick look at what might be different. On, on this map versus the standard Global 40 map. And starting at the bottom there, the, the orange chips are gonna be the air bases and naval bases that are uh, on this map that are not on the Global 40. Uh, the red chips are gonna be uh, IPC changes for countries. And you can see here a lot of the neutrals uh, and get a little boost here, but honestly, unless you attack the neutrals, that, that doesn't come into play. The yellow chips are additional convoy zones. Uh, the convoy zone you see off Gibraltar uh, is significant because Gibraltar uh, is now worth two IPCs on this map. So it actually, you know, becomes worthwhile more than just you know as an entrance to the med. Uh, the C zone here uh, on the east coast of the U.S is moved back a little bit so that central U.S. Uh, is a different C zone than eastern U.S. So 
where you've got the naval base on the eastern, you don't have one in the central, um, which really only facilitates a difference, or really not much of a difference, because if you're going to the Pacific, you're starting one closer, so that it, that that uh, naval base on the east coast doesn't really come into that effect uh, too much. Um, you're still two away from Gibraltar, whether it's um, coming from central or three away from eastern with the naval base, so you still get to the same spots. Um, Canada gets some boost. Uh, I'm not going to play Canada as a separate country. Um, it is a separate country in the deluxe game. Um, but you can see a couple more uh, convoy zones, uh, an added air base there in Canada. The sea zone change uh, around England is that Scotland no longer uh, I don't believe so, yeah. Scotland does not touch the sea zone by London because uh, so, a lot of times you can get a double uh, air base going and protect those uh, ships that you're building or, or harboring there on, on that side of uh, England you know with six planes, you know, three scrambled from each uh, air base so that, that's kind of taken away. There's an island at the top that is a neutral, uh, pro-allies neutral. Uh, you can see going down through here a lot of changes of the territory values. Uh, Malta has an air base, uh, Tunisia has a naval base. And coming down a couple extra IPCs and most of these changes are only one IPC. Um, some of them are, you know, are, are a couple, uh, but most of them are just one IPC changes. Um, you've got two, well, three new territories in Russia. Uh, Georgia between uh, Turkey and the Caucasus, they add in Crimea and it is two now, and the Ukraine is just one, So, and Rostov is one. So those points were scavenged there to create Crimea, so that's where that factory will go instead of the Ukraine. Uh, there is an additional ter territory between Moscow and Germany, uh, just called Russia. So that gives the Russians, a, you know, possibly an extra turn there. Some more bases, extra points. Java and New Guinea with naval bases, those are, those are kind of helpful. Um, New Hebrides has a naval base, but that doesn't come into effect very much. Uh, all the islands that should be fought over are, are one point now, uh, with the exception of Iwo Jima is two, uh, Okinawa is two, and the Carolinas is two. And then this is a new island on the map. Uh, probably will add one Japanese infantry there just for defense, uh, being as how that is, it's just an extra island. Uh, Russia up there, Amur is two. Uh, if you wanted to build a factory as Russia, you could, uh, but Japan would probably take it right away. That would be good. Good for Japan, I say. Uh, naval base, a couple extra convoy zones, and like I said, just some more territory value changes. And looking at the starting IPCs, we've got here in the income tracker itself the map values. These figures <clears throat> or roundels on the top side are the actual G40 starting positions. You know, 10 and 10 for Anzac and Italy. Well, in this game on the map, they're at 13 and Italy's up to 15. And as we go down, uh, France, you know, big deal. That's an extra dollar for Germany, I guess. UK Pacific is, is up quite a few. Um, Japan and Germany are each up some uh, IPCs, but uh, if you look at Britain, Russia, and US, they are all up significant dollar amounts. And I will read off the difference here. Germany is actually up eight. Japan is up 11. Italy is up five. So the Axis uh, have an increase of 24 IPCs. And before you get all crazy and, and nutty on, hey, that's too much, that's crazy, I don't want any part of that. 
let me just say that the US is up 13 Russia is up 11 UK uh, Europe is up 17 that, that's that's huge uh, UK Pacific is up 3 and Anzac is up 3 uh, or UK Pacific is up 6 Anzac is up 3 and that is a total of 50 IPCs that they are up so it's kind of like playing this map you've got a starting bid of, of plus 26 for the allies um, not units that actually start on the board but income that you buy units with which kind of you know when you, whenever you think about bids and placing units in crazy places and for special attacks like sometimes you know if the allies get a bid well they'll flood the Mediterranean with ships well Italy's done that 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 that, that moves over but if you're using this map and, and your bid you're giving the allies an extra 26 you know IPCs they have to be placed at the factories you know on the first turn as you're going so it is a little bit more um, slanted the allies way it gives them a little extra help um, now the territories that will be falling uh, will give the access more uh, cash to deal with too as as the game progresses but the allies you know once you get all the the objectives starting to roll uh, I think they'll be in pretty good shape as well but we will see how that goes and uh, let me take a time out here to set up the global 40 uh, units uh, as they would appear in a normal global 40 game and boom there's your setup the out-of-box G40 setup on the deluxe map. I want to make two adjustments uh, from the intro. The UK uh, Europe money from this map, because this map is set up for Canada as a separate country, where its uh, territories are boosted, you know, just below Anzac, so that it's playable. Um, I'm going to move those values back to the out of box so those five extra IPCs uh, will be taken off of UK Europe so they'll go from 45 to 40 which is still a significant uh, starting IPC value but I, did, I thought the 45 was a little too much if, if you were going to play this as you know it's Canada you know then you would you would back the UK down and, and even a, a couple more uh, for the Canadian uh, provinces that are going to be their own country. Uh, the other item was I said I wasn't going to do Sea Lion, but typically I, I don't really start a game planning to do Sea Lion or not to. I kind of wait and see what Britain does on that first turn. And several factors, you know, of what Britain would do, you know, if they didn't build, you know, an infantry build on turn one, well, that. That kind of helps. Uh, you would go, you know, that that really furthers the sea lion thought. Uh, if they scramble their fighters uh, to defend those ships, you know, and lose some fighters, uh, that's another indicator um, that sea lion, you know, could be a, a good option. But the third one is uh, oddly enough the Taranto raid, because you you really need to send fighters and that bomber down to the Mediterranean. So it's almost the equivalent of losing them, you know, if you scrambled them. So a lot of times, you know, and especially if the Tyranna raid doesn't go well, um, you know, now Britain's behind the eight ball, uh, so you might change your mind and, and, and throw in sea lions. So I'm going to wait and see how that goes. Uh, initially, my, my plan is just to attack Russia and not do the sea lion, but I'm going to play Britain as if I'm you know defending for a sea lion so there's a there's an infantry purchase there there's some units for Africa um, so we're gonna play it as if I'm defending against sea lion so I'm not gonna scramble I'm not I'm gonna build that uh, infantry build in, in London but I am gonna do the Tyranno raid just because of the anti-aircraft uh, house rules we're, we're gonna use here the the flyover so Germany's gonna spread out some anti-aircraft guns so you get a, a peek at what, you know, those planes flying to do Toronto, you know, the anti-aircraft fire that they'll be uh, going through. 
So let's uh, get ready with this. I'm going to try and do one turn uh, and the intro and, and put that into one video. We'll see you know, how that goes, how long that takes. Um, and, and we'll post that and then we'll, we'll go into turn two and see you know, from there whether it's just getting too long you know, to do a whole turn. Um, may break it down as we go along and just show maybe some important battles and and doing the Brian Wassum style, which you know I, I love those you know game videos. They're they're fun to watch uh, just to see the strategies and the things that are going on. So I'm gonna pause the video and set up the Paris battle, and then I will bring in uh, all the other battles uh, and move those pieces after I get the Paris one going. All right, so. I have to have a disclaimer here. I played the first round. While the camera was going, there's an automatic shut off uh, for the time that it will film. And it did that twice while I was doing the first round, but what I didn't know was that when it automatically shuts off, it doesn't finish formatting the, the video file, so I couldn't use them. So <clears throat> I had to reset everything up. We'll start back over and might have some different results, but you'll never know. So I've got the Paris battle set up. Um, I want to add one of these anti-aircraft guns from Western Germany and we'll put it over there on the board. So we'll get that in uh, on the attack rule. Uh, there's two fighters, a British and a French fighter. We'll attack those. We're also going to bring this Stuka in from Poland, one, two, three, and we'll land back there. So we'll have anti aircraft shots on both sides. Normally, um, most people don't bring that Stuka in there just because of the risk, you know, of losing it. I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's extremely painful to lose a plane to France. So let's set up the rest of the battles. Uh, we'll take two subs over here off Canada and we'll try and deal with those guys. Uh, we're gonna bring one sub up north and the other two subs down south and we'll hit the standard two British navies. We're gonna throw in a uh, battleship on there. Let's do some math on these planes. We got a fighter coming in with two and then we're gonna have another fighter and a Stuka coming in at three and we're gonna bring in a third Stuka at three so we're gonna have well let me look at that one more time yes because the other Stuka is coming from Western Germany and he'll come over there into this battle with one left. And these are some lovely markers from historical board gaming. Fuel gauge markers if you wanna. They've been in other videos that I've done. And then we've got these two planes. One, two, they will have three left. And I'll just stack them outward from that three and then this fighter as well along with the two bombers. One, two, three, they'll have three left as well, but they'll all just go back to Germany. So all these, that trail of planes will be hitting this sea zone. These planes and ships hitting that sea zone. I also have two subs in there. And like I said earlier, I'm not going to scramble. I'm gonna pretend like there might be a sea line going so I don't wanna waste my planes. If I knew for sure, uh, would I scramble? You know, I, I, I might scramble this one for, you know, just to eliminate maybe one plane, get into those planes, uh, maybe two planes. But um, for this game, I'm going to pretend like Sea Lion might be an option. Okay, we got an artillery, infantry, tank moving into Normandy. And we've got the standard units coming in to Yugoslavia. We are going to hit Yugoslavia and bounce into Romania. So I need to bring a unit from there. 
We're going to leave this tank because it's going to take Bulgaria, but we'll bring that tank in. So that'll be six infantry, two artillery, two tanks, and a fighter. And we might as well just bring that infantry in to see if that one can help. Who knows? All right, so that would be all of the battles. Paris, Normandy, two na three navels, and Yugoslavia. All right, so I'm going to roll the Paris battle first. So let me adjust the uh, camera here. If I can get all that, you can see the battle on the two boards there. Those are the forces. And I'd already lined up the Germans first roll with eight ones, four twos. You know what? I got it all lined up all the dice for that first battle, but I got to roll the anti-aircraft first. So the German anti-aircraft, and a one will be a hit, and the two will be a damage for a retreat. So the Germans get nothing. The French fire back, nothing. So the only thing you really saw there was that this anti-aircraft gun got to come into the battle. It had no effect on the battle whatsoever. So here is Germany's first round. With some hit dice. That's what I'm using here. And that's not a very good first round. Five hits. Let's slide those off. We're going to take four casualties and an anti-aircraft gun. So that will be what's left. So let's roll in. We had six twos for the infantry. And two for the two artilleries. I had two tanks and two fighters. Mmm, good roll for the French. They got seven hits. Ouch. All right, so let's take off. That will be five, six. Seven. So we're going to remember that that green chip is mechanized. No, we're not, because we're going to lose that anti-aircraft gun. There's my seven. All right, so that leaves us two ones. Four twos. Five threes. And a four. Round two. There we go. All right, there's four, there's six, there's eight. So that is two, four, six, eight. So all the French and British are gone. And they will fight back with four twos, two threes, and two fours. And here's where you always hope they don't get into the army. All right, so four hits. Since we're planning on going to Russia, and the artillery and mechs are the same cost. I'm going to take two mechs and two artillery as the casualties. Those are gone, and that is what's left. I'll set that over there on the ma map so I remember to put it in Paris. All right, so let's come back to the board and roll out the rest of those battles. So, maybe I'll straighten it up. I don't know if that matters when you're viewing it, but it makes more sense to me. So we'll start over here off the coast of Canada with two subs attacking. There's one hit, and I got a destroyer back, and there's one hit. So. Of course, I guess I should have rolled that where you were seeing, but it's not that big a deal, I guess. I'll put the box, let me flip my camera view around, I just... Alright, so, I trashed my buy by leaning over the table. Alright, so there is the box tray for the dice tray. 
So we'll go to, well, let's go up north here. We're not scrambling. They have a destroyer. So there's no first strikes. So there's my two for the subs, two fighters, two stukas, and a battleship. Four hits. One, two, three, four. So that is everything the British had. And they have a simple two, three, four back. And they get one hit. That could not have worked out better. We will lose the sub. Well, now that I'm thinking about it. Let's take a hit on that battleship because I got to believe that battleship's going to die regardless of what planes ships are left. Maybe I'll save that sub. All right, southern battle, no scramble there. There are, however, no destroyers. So the two subs miss, no first strikes. That'll give me two fighters, two stukas, and two bombers for four hits. And that is all the allies had there. This time, though, it's two threes and a four for the defense. And I just dropped them everywhere. And two hits there, so we'll take those two subs. We do not want to lose any planes. Two subs are gone. And the last roll will be Yugoslavia. And we've got two artillery, so two infantry will be boosted. So that'll be five ones. And then we got three, or two tanks and one fighter. The object is not to get five hits. But we did want more than two. All right, well, it is what it is. So we got five Yugoslavian Infantry rolls back. Oh, crust. All right. I usually root root for the attacker because I'm attacking. So we'll knock that down to a green, and then we've got to remove three. So we'll take off an infantry and the red chip, and put the green chip. And we will bounce out. All right, so I didn't mark my battles. That probably should have done that. All right, so let's put four. Oh, we have the France battle we left. I'll roll that off to the side here. Two twos and a three for Germany. Two hits. France, two twos, one hit back probably normal. All right, let's set that dice tray down. All right, so France and Normandy fell. We're going to march on to Finland, claim that, and this tank is coming down. And we're going to bring a guy. I guess I could have just used one. But we may hit Greece, so that'll, that'll be fine. All right, that is our movements, claiming territories. We're going to land this fighter, because I know Toronto Raid is coming. So hopefully they might be an anti-aircraft hit or damage and force a plane out of the battle and give uh, Italy a, at least a little bit of a chance there. All right, so we're going to move... Anti-aircraft guns, get them going forward. Now here, we need to move one there, and we're going to move one into France. And we're, yeah, we've got to leave one, move one into Western Germany. So now, whichever route they take, they're going to be flying over anti-aircraft guns and heading to Toronto. 
put the tanks on there. And the two mechs. The Stuka that participated has to land in Germany. Alright, this one has to land in Holland, Belgium, Holland. We'll land a fighter there as well. These will land back there. Three, so I can only scramble three fighters from that air base, so I'm going to land another Stuka in Belgium just in case you know Britain would want to attack that if it was just one Stuka alone but since it's me being playing Britain I'm not going to do that I'll move our ship up here turn over we'll grab a infantry and artillery move that forward move Five down. You know what? We're gonna move all, all ten down, and the artillery. All right. So that is where we end up. We have a damaged battleship. Our troops are around the board. We grab French's money and put it over here for Germany. On this map, instead of 19, as in the outer box, it's 20. Let's set that aside. Here's the money they spent. Let's place their units. We might as well place that bomber there. We're going to place a sub on the outside and then the destroyer and transport on the inside of the Denmark Strait. Two artillery, two infantry. I do like the extra goods on the buy for the extra cash that Germany started with. And with that second transport, you know, you still can threaten Sea Lion with some additional transports in a, the second round if you wish to go that route. Let me move Germany up on the chart. They go up two, six, nine, eleven. And if you'll notice, Bulgaria and Finland are each boosted up one. The France numbers do not change. So that gives them a total of 49 on the first round, plus the 20 for uh, France's money. Two objectives for controlling Denmark and not at war with Soviet Union. And now we'll do Russia's turn. All right, I, I don't remember <clears throat> if I showed the buys on that uh, intro, but I, I made the purchases for all the countries uh, to get the turn going a little quicker. And I see that ah, French without his money. Um, I may make some changes as I get to some of those later countries, but for now, that, that'll just be good. And I'm just going to slide those Russian infantry over. This is uh, on Russia's turn. Nothing fancy going on there. And then for Russia itself, they are not at war. So basically I'm just moving, placing out my buy. The money doesn't change. And it is at 48. But one thing I'm going to do to slide these anti-aircraft guns south because a lot of times I'll have a bomber, German bomber down here come across the Black Sea and bomb Stalingrad and if I can set up these anti-aircraft guns around it there'll be two anti-aircraft shots going in there and because uh, usually there's no fighters defending Stalingrad because you, you want them farther north we'll go ahead and move our troops back and that's quite a stack there we'll move that one into there alright so I did buy an artillery so we're going to move him up 
And we're going to move these guys up as well. Alright, so slide them up. One, two. Slide up. Now, the good news is there's an extra space there. Keeps Germany away an extra turn, maybe. Um, the bad news is it's everything's one space away from this factory. It make, takes it a little longer to get there. We'll fly the planes up here for now. Uh, we will leave the subs and ships alone. That's pretty much it for Russia turn. Place out the plane that was purchased. Two guys and a artillery and I will chip that out between the turns so that it's not so crazy. Yeah, six guys in Moscow and three down in Crimea. All right, on to Japan's turn, and that should be easy too, just because there's no J1 on this turn. Slide this over here, and pretty much everything's right here in uh, the screen. We have our standard Japan moves, nothing fancy. Alright, so we'll slide in three guys. Three guys and two artillery. And for right now, we just need one and one. Now we're going to bring in some planes. So now this map has an air base. So now one, two, three, four, so we can get an extra fighter into that battle down there in Yunnan, which is nice. They come down from Shanghai, the standard two bombers come in. One, two, three, four, so this plane can take in that battle, along with the two fighters and two tacticals from Manchuria. So that is pretty much it. For those, we bring over some dice and some planes. Planes. The, the dice tray. Slide that in there. Hopefully that's in the screen. Alright, so that should be enough dice. Alright, so we've got two guys in Union. We've got one pan attacking, two artillery, two infantry, we have three fighters and two tacticals. So we'll roll that, three hits, there is two Chinese troops there. They will roll back at two, and they get nothing. So the next battle, I got three ones. I didn't bring three ones, but two, all right. Three ones for the infantry, two threes for the fighters, two fighter or two bombers and a tactical at four. That is three hits, which they have four infantry there. So let's roll four twos. Make the Japanese pay. No, nope. one hit. All right, so let's go back and finish that last guy off. Just need one hit. Oh, we've got five. And it sounds like somebody's here, so I'm going to have to roll the Chinese. All right, we'll pause that and we'll come back and finish Japan's turn. Back from the interruption there. Move these out of the way. They'll be used for Britain's turn. All right, so we're gonna do what everybody does. We're gonna land all our planes right there. So it's one big old pile of aluminum. 
Japan goes up four, China goes down four. All right, so let's move some guys inland. We're going to take these two and that transport, land them down there. And those guys will slide in. These guys are going to slide south. The transport that is up in the Japan Sea Zone take an infantry and artillery. Now to keep the British honest, we'll move down some ships to keep those transports safe. We're going to send a carrier as well. I forgot to move these Russians, but while they're on the, the film here, I'll move them. Drive that down. We're going to, there's transport. He's coming up, he's gonna grab the man and the tank, drop them off in Korea. The Koreans will slide over. I slide two over there. All right, that is it. Just for grins. We're gonna leave that down there. It's nothing's, I know nothing's happening because I'm playing both sides. All right. That is the end of Japan. We'll place out their units and they get to collect four dollars. Put the factory there, two more transports, and a destroyer. Another guy. All right. So Japan goes up from 37 to 41. And plus the national objective for not being at war with the U.S. So where's their money? Let's see what they've got. 37, so that would be 41, it'd be 51. So we'll just get $51. All right, the U.S. Pretty simple. While we're on this side, I'll just go ahead and do this side. They got nothing coming. Actually, I guess I need to move a little further up so you can see. I'm going to move a sub out to there. I'm going to bring a man and a or an infantry and an anti-aircraft gun. In case there's an invasion of Pearl Harbor. And this fighter's flying out to protect. And the standard blocking destroyer. Just to make it a little difficult. Alright. On the east coast, there's absolutely nothing going on really. We're going to take two mech to the other coast. Slide all those up. So I will place on the Pacific coast a carrier, fighter, and a tactical. When the U.S. is neutral, their factories are minors, so they can only place three at each location. And the U.S. will place three on the east coast, the bomber, destroyer, infantry, and central U.S. is just two infantry. Their money does not change because they're not at war. China, they get four infantry because they had twelve dollars. That's their buy. I'll bring them with me. The dice tray. We're only going to need ones and twos over there, so I can clean out these threes and fours. Alright, that's their buy. And it is China's turn. And they're not doing anything fancy. So they're going to hit these two guys with these six and the fighter. 
a matter of fact, let's bring one down. Let's go do seven. So I have five ones. So I'll roll two extra if I need it, which I don't know. I got one hit. So now I'll roll two ones. I do need the three for that fighter. And nothing, so only one hit. That was a pretty terrible roll for China. Two Japanese guys, they do nothing, so one of those is gone. So we'll roll the fighter and the five ones that I have. Three hits. That's what they needed on the first round. Japan gets one back. Alright. And that Parker goes away for now. Sure, it will be back. The good news is China does get its national objective for having the Burma Road open. All right, so we're going to move this fighter. We're going to have to move him up there, and we're going to place our four guys here for the counterattack and bring him down. We're going to give that northern one up. Alright, China is done. Let me collect their money. They're at 8. Plus the 6 is going to give China 14. Let me put 2 bucks on the Chinese roundel here. And we will move on to Britain. All right, so Britain's turn is now up, and I'm going to move the battle over here in Ethiopia first. We're going to grab an infantry and artillery and come on over with this transport and a bombardment. And we're going to do the same infantry artillery. And there and come down so we've got those four units plus this mech and a bombardment so we got to knock out those Italians down there in Ethiopia we'll have to deal with Somalia Italian Somalia next turn let me move the camera up and we'll do the rest of the British turn the problem that we've got to German battleship. I'd like if it was just the battleship. I'd, I would like to bring that cruiser up with some planes. But with that sub, the Germans could bring that into the battle and extend that battle. Maybe get two rounds of rolls on that with that battleship. So that could that could be painful. So I think we'll do the traditional cruiser over there for that battle. And we're going to go into Toronto, like I said, with this carrier, those two ships, and I've got that tactical with two spaces left. And I've got this fighter off Malta with an airbase, one, two, so it has three spaces left. Alright, so. We're going to bring down the bomber and one fighter from London. And they can fly around all this German anti-aircraft, but not the Italian. So when they go through there, there's going to be a dice roll on these two planes. The plane has to land on the carrier, the fighter plane I should say, because it has zero left. The bomber will have two. But I'm leaving them up here so I remember to roll that anti-aircraft. And then we'll bring this fighter from Gibraltar, which has an air base, but this still does not have enough move to get back to Malta, so he'll land on that carrier as well. So the legal landing spots, I've got two fighters that have to land on that carrier. So if the carrier's gone, those fighters will have to be taken as casualties or they'll be gone as well. 
I want to come across and try and make a safe spot for this transport so we're going to go after that sub there and we're just going to throw these two fighters you know even though I didn't want to deplete the, the fighters in London for the possible sea lion that you know could or could not happen I guess I could change my mind you know how this goes but I just need one hit the subs not in this battle since it's all aircraft um, probably if this was my turn as Britain I wouldn't do Toronto and I would just concentrate on getting rid of that uh, German battleship and using my navy in the med a different way but since we're going to illustrate the anti-aircraft flyover rule, we'll get with that. So that leaves one, two, three, four naval battles and a land battle. And then on the other side of the board, uh, UK Pacific is not at war, so they will do nothing other than move some pieces. All right, so let's bring our dice tray out here. And I think that that's in view. But we've got for this sub battle off uh, Canada a two for the British and a one for the German sub. So let's see how that rolls. Oh my, that backfired. That backfired. Now that transport. There's probably nowhere safe for that transport. All right. So, German sub says it will convoy. I'll have to remember to do that. Up here on this battleship, we've got two threes for the British fighters, and then we have a four for the German battleship. One each. So the battleship is gone, and one fighter is gone. Get that damage chip off. All right, so he will turn back to London. Sub stays. Next naval battle is one cruiser for Britain and one destroyer for Italy. This is risky. Usually you'll put a plane with that. So let's see how that rolls out. Britain wins that battle. Alright, so that worked out nicely. Now the big battle. I would have to determine before the dice rolls for these anti-aircraft guns if I'm going to scramble those three fighters. And I think I will. So let's put those in there for the sake of this uh, round and see if we can do some damage. So these two planes flying over top of the Italian anti-aircraft guns in northern Italy. One's a kill, two is damage. Nothing. So the anti-aircraft really hasn't played an effect other than the Germans got to use that one on attack. So right now, we've got four Britain, one destroyer, one cruiser, three fighters, a bomber, and a tactical. Alright. One, two, three, four hits. All right, so that clears out Italy's battleship, cruiser, and a fighter. So they are returning fire. Three fighters, battleship, cruiser. And they get three hits on the British. All right, so... To stay in, we would have to lose these two and a fighter. But then we would lose the rest of our navy, which we're probably going to lose anyway. But if we back out. Why? Because we could lose this fighter that has zero left and we can retreat that carrier into the Malta Sea Zone with that cruiser. 
And I think that's what will that leaves that German or Italian transport. And I can kill those. Oh, so let's just let's do that and assume we're gonna stay in there with that carrier. But you know what? I think we're gonna lose that carrier. So instead of losing the destroyer and the cruiser, we're gonna lose the carrier and the one fighter. Which means that if we take a hit, it has to be that other fighter that was going to land on the carrier. So now we got a two, one, two, three threes, and two fours. Two hits, so they barely, barely got the job done. So that is gone, and the Axis gets to return fire with one hit. So we lose the one fighter that we suspected we were going to lose anyway. Alright, so these land in there. These will all land on Malta along with the bomber. And there's an air base on Malta. Which is why I thought in this, this map, in this scenario, I should have maybe retreated that carrier into the Malta Sea Zone with the air base. I could have had some fighters on there and had a pretty good defense. That's probably what I should have done. But I didn't. So there we are. Alright, now off camera I will roll the attack on the Italians in Ethiopia. So we got four twos, a one, and then a three for the bombardment. Two hits. The Italians have three twos back and get two back. All right. So the two infantry and two infantry are gone. Two for Britain, two for Italy. So that leaves three twos for England to get one more hit, and they do. Italy returns with nothing. Alright, so Ethiopia has fallen. That is a one point for England. And that is it for combat. So, what else can we do here? We're gonna... I did buy eight infantry so I'm going to move two down to Gibraltar and we're going to leave everything else here slide them down slide the anti-aircraft nothing we can do over there we just flat out lost that one move this tank back I did have another infantry in Anglo-Egyptian Sudan but I thought if things went bad and there was two transports, I'd rather have that in Egypt than attacking that Ethiopia. So we'll move him up. Go ahead and place my eight infantry up here. So that gives a total of ten British infantry, two French, two fighters, and a mech. Five anti-aircraft guns. More than enough to spend off those two transports. And then on the south side it looks like that. We'll move these two guys up one space. And on the other side of the world, I forgot to bring my British roundel. Grab one here. He'll march over for that. So Britain goes up two and Italy goes down one. And here we're just going to move up the guys and we'll bring one back. No. So we bought five guys. Well, we'll bring one. We'll bring the fighter back too. I should have brought my purchase over for there. In India, I've got five guys and a transport. And the transport, the idea is to next turn, we'll try and take uh, like Sumatra, give us some 
extra cash for UK Pacific. And then down in South Africa, I'm placing a two tanks and a mech. And that is it. It will be Italy's turn. Britain does have the national objective for not losing any of its territories yet. Move the camera over here to see Italy. Alright, so that will be $47 for Great Britain. And the UK Pacific does not change because they are not at war. I do have a convoy role here in Canada. I do not have a role because I needed a three or under. Nothing changes there. All right, Italy is up. And Italy has to make a decision. They really can't go after that cruiser because of that air base there. So they're going to go after this cruiser and destroyer. And we'll clean that up with that bomber as well. Alright, so that transport, they're going to go in here with these guys. Try and get that. And of course this and these guys will go into there. I'm missing a guy in uh, Libya there. Because the tank would have started there. So they're going to go into Tunisia. And I guess we'll go into here. I mean, it seems like it would be a better idea just to sit put. I think it will be. I think it will be better to, as opposed to wasting all those forces. The Italians in the south, though, will walk into Kenya. So we'll move Italy back up to 15 and Great Britain down one. All right, so. I got three guys there. I wonder, let's just use the transport to bring two more guys over here into Yugoslavia. And that is a, on the assumption we win that naval battle, but I can't see us not winning that naval battle. Alright, so. The naval battle to start it off with. Two twos, three and a four. Needing two hits, getting one. Britain fires back, one hit, so one and one. I'm going to lose that sub, because it defends at one, obviously. All right, so the next battle, two, three, and a four, nothing. Britain, nothing. Italians, one hit. Britain, nothing again. So that worked out good for Italy. They just lost the sub. However, they did not clear the med. So into Yugoslavia is three ones. Sorry, Frenchman. Three ones, two twos, and a three. Needing three hits. Getting two. All right, so Yugoslavia fires back. Nothing. Need one hit now. One hit's what they got. Yugoslavia returns fire, gets one. Alright, so one Italian, and then the three Yugoslavians are gone. Alright, so Yugoslavia on this map is worth three, so that's a good deal. Southern France is the final battle. Nope, oh, Tunisia is the final battle. All right, Southern France, I got a one, two twos, and a three. Needing two hits on France, getting one. France rolls, gets nothing. Keep it up, nothing. 
France, nothing. Italy, two hits. France, nothing. So Italy did not lose a single unit there. And that is a three, but that is out of box number as well, so there's no extra IPC there. Alright, Tunisia. Two twos and a three versus one. Oh, two hits versus one French, and he gets a hit, so that is that. So those numbers give Italy an additional seven. So they do not have a bonus or no national objectives. But they do uh, move their IPCs up to 22. So that will be good. Italy, let me look at their numbers. They have 13, so if I give them another 10 and take one. They did save $2. So, their purchase is uh, one man and one fighter. And the bomber will land there. No other moves for Italy. And that should be it for the combat. The only thing left, the French Navy. That doesn't seem like a wise use for the French Navy. I think they'll go out and protect that uh, transport. I might as well move that now while I'm here. I'll go out there and guard that transport. We're going to move two French over, and then this French is supposed to be in west, so he'll move into the central. And we'll leave the French fighter alone up there. French destroyer down here in uh, off Madagascar. We'll just move up to there. Alright, so I'm going to have to turn this one sideways for Anzac. Oh, I did forget to move this battleship back to India on the British term. I'll ask myself if I can allow it, and yes, I did allow it, so you got to be friendly when you're playing the game. Somewhere is my Anzac Roundel was over on the other side. Alright, so the Anzacs, not being at war, the only thing they do is this transport will grab two guys and land in Java. And then we're going to move these two guys over to get picked up by that transport on round two if Japan doesn't declare on, Jan uh, on round two. These two fighters fly over cruiser comes over. Such is Anzac's turn. They do get an additional four dollars though for picking up Java. Alright, so this map using the deluxe map as you can see the totals will move up Anzac to 17. No effect for China in this on this map. Uh, Anzac, you know, is up higher than they would be. France is gone. Uh, UK Pacific is up higher. Uh, obviously, Japan and uh, Britain being at 41 is is very helpful. Uh, Germany and Russia neck and neck, and then of course America is way up the line. That might have got a little shaky there at the end as I'm holding this whole tripod and camera together. And then those would be the national objectives for turn one. And I will do two, turn two uh, the following day. So enjoy and keep rolling dice.